Welcome to Toxic Beauty. A look at the HBO Max docuseries, Not So Pretty. My name is Roxanne Wilson. And for the next few episodes, I'm going to take you through a look at this pretty telling docuseries that goes into the trillion dollar cosmetics, beauty, and personal care industry and raises awareness about the dangers of everyday makeup, hair, skin, and nail products. My hope is that you'll sit with myself and my friends and have an earnest conversation. And my hope is that through that, you are going to find what works for you, the actions that you might want to take, to make sure that your beauty is not so toxic. Let's dive in. So if you're listening right now, you've probably either binged the entire series of Not So Pretty or you just finished watching episode four. And I got to tell you, um, when I dove into Not So Pretty, I some people had told me, hey, you got to watch this. And I don't know at that time that I knew. I knew I wanted to do something with this series and have a conversation um, about it, but I didn't really know what that was going to look like or how that was going to be. But something I did is I actually went on my Instagram and said, hey, I'm watching Not So Pretty. Is anyone else watching it? And then I showed my reaction after the first episode and was like, you got to watch. And it just so happens that one of my friends, Tasha Hawkwald, um, saw my Instagram story and decided, oh my goodness. She texted me, she said, I'm going to watch it. So she, the next day as we were texting, I asked her, what did you think about it? And she, lo and behold, tells me that she was, I don't want to call it a victim, but maybe that's fair, of Diva Curl. Now, I, my jaw dropped to the floor first and foremost. And secondly, I knew that we needed to have a full conversation around episode four and that Tasha needed to be the person to to share this with us. So Tasha Hawkwell, thank you so much for being right here with me. I really appreciate you being vulnerable. And honestly, I got to tell you, of all of my guests, you are the only guest that has been directly affected or impacted by what we see in Not So Pretty. So I want to thank you ahead of time for being vulnerable, for sharing your story and all the things. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you for telling me about Not So Pretty. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have watched it. So um, it was really eye-opening for me as well. So thank you. Well, I will take that. I'll receive that because, you know, I'm always like about receiving compliments. But it is my hope that perhaps watching that was hopefully a little bit um, therapeutic. It was, absolutely. Because it helped me realize that I truly was not alone because when it was happening to me a few years ago I really thought oh this just must be me like because I didn't know anybody else personally where they were having a problem so I thought it was just me Mm -hmm. and now you know you weren't alone Mm -hmm. Tasha thank you so much for joining us please tell us a little about yourself before we dive in of course and thanks again for having me so um my name is tasha hawkwald i'm originally from california so i'm a native there's not many natives <laughs> in california nowadays but um i'm a wife and um i'm the mommy to three beautiful kids that happen to have four legs each so <laughs> i'm a fur mom um i worked in corporate america for about 30 years for very large companies, um, won't bore you with that part. And um, I still live in Southern California, Orange County to be specific. So let's dive into it. Okay, so we're talking about episode four, Not So Pretty. And (laughs) as we start with this episode, uh, you know, it's interesting because I'll admit to you, I'd never heard of Diva Curl. So I've got to ask you first and foremost, how had you ever heard of Diva Curl? So that's a great question. So I, um, when I first heard about Diva Curl, I had done the big chop with my hair. So I had cut my hair um, really short and um, I was trying to find um, products to really help enhance the natural texture of my hair. So um, my stepdaughter um, actually told me that she was using Diva Curl and I thought, oh, you know, we don't have the same hair. Um, she's got curly hair, but her curly is not my curly. So I wasn't sure if it would work for me. Um, and then long and behold, my, um, sister 
was using Diva Curl as well. And she too said that she liked it. Um, again, her texture hair is different than mine, but I thought, okay, if my sister's using it and she likes it, then, you know, I should give it a try. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's kind of how I first heard about it prior to that. I had, I didn't know anything about it. I hadn't seen any advertisements, nothing word of mouth. And, you know, we have to remember that a lot of times word of mouth is, is the most powerful type of recommendation on something. Absolutely. So the episode kind of starts and reminds us, first of all, that straight hair is a Eurocentric, um, thing. Of course, Mo, you and I are both African-American. Um, we t- talks about colonialism, more desirable. Hair is an issue. Hair is a, I don't know if it's an issue. Hair is a, hair means more than just hair. Absolutely. And I think to black people, hair means more than just hair. Right. I don't know how to um, fully explain that to those who aren't black and who may not understand that hair is part of identity. And, and I think even we're, we don't even, from the moment we're born and we're like in society, even though we don't know the history of hair. And I, I learned some stuff in that documentary about hair and how they, I didn't know all those things about how they shaved when, when they brought blacks from Africa to the U S and probably other, I'm going to assume the, the Caribbean and all the other places they'd shave the hair, um, it was an identity thing. Yeah. And, uh, and for, they forgot their roots or where they came from. And even without knowing that hair has always been, um, been a thing. I mean, I'll be honest with you. There've been times where I felt less than because of my hair, I remember kids in school telling me I look, like I had pubic hair on my head. Like I remember those things vividly. Um, and so watching this and seeing what happened to so many women who were not only women of color who have that attachment to hair, but also women whose hair was always considered like it's different. Right. And I I think with Diva Curl, the fact that it was celebrating difference and then that celebration turned into exactly the opposite, it makes it all the more devastating. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 2000%. And um, I... I, um, I really, really, really wanted to embrace my natural hair, um, because my entire, like you said, my personally, my entire life, I was trying to, I worked in corporate America and I was in senior management and I felt like I had to, um, look a certain way. And I thought I had to have straight hair, And, um, I never felt like it would be acceptable for me to have anything else other than straight hair. Mm -hmm. So, um, a few years ago when I decided to make the big chop, it was a huge decision. And I was actually, honestly, I was having a little bit of anxiety about doing it. Um, and so, but I made the decision and I was really looking for something to, um, kind of help me work with my hair, help me feel good about it, help me, you know, find my new pretty If that, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, you know, for so long, my, the way that I felt like I had to look pretty was with straight hair. So I was looking for, exactly. So, um, anyway, so yeah, so that's how I started using it. And at first it worked, it worked pretty good. So interesting. Um, the plot twist for everyone who who may be listening and didn't know is that it turns out Diva Curl had formaldehyde in it. And you can imagine putting formaldehyde not only in your hair, but your hair is connect, connect, it's porous place into your scalp. A lot of things happen. What we found out was there's no test, there was no testing at all in this hair product prior to being sold. No one's tested it for anything. Um, the FDA had 1,500 reports of Diva Curl. 1500 reports, people reporting it to the FDA, thinking if I report it to the government, something will happen. And as you can imagine, the FDA did nothing. To their, I guess, I don't want to say credit, in their defense, they don't have the ability to do anything, which um, that shocked me. Were you shocked when you learned that throughout the docuseries? I was. Um a little shocked by that. Um, and actually more than a little shocked by that, because I thought that they had 
more regulatory power. You think so? Yeah. You You just assume it's a a fair assumption. Although we all know when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you and, and me, and I guess all of the US of A, because we do not realize this. So just a little bit more about like what they found and all the things Um, we know personal care products in general are not regulated. And also, you know, what's the incentive for a company to actually check on things like this? They don't have an incentive to go, oh, just kidding. Just kidding. We are giving you, uh, we're putting formaldehyde on your head. Right. Keep trusting us. The interesting phenomenon about this, I think as well too, Tasha, is that Diva Crow had its rise during the rise of social media. Mm-hmm. And so you have all these influencers who were literally like, not even, most of them weren't even getting paid, but they were just right. really excited. They were getting free products and were super excited about this product that made them feel good. Um, you know, it's crazy that they were finding things in blood and breast milk and urine from this, but, um, I and it's to, expensive too. I kept hearing that you, 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 I was about to ask you how much did Diva Crow, cause I looked online now and it's like, I'm sure less expensive than it was before, but like, how much was a bottle of Diva Crow? So I, the first time I got it, I got like just a trial um, pack. So it probably was like $50, but then as, after I got that initial trial pack, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to get the larger containers and they were like $50. And so it's like, you have your, you have your shampoo, which I was using the no poo. And then you have the conditioner and I was using the decadence leave-in conditioner. Um, and then they had another conditioner. I forgot the name of that one. And then the actual um, curl stimulator, you know, so those are the products I was using. So, yeah, I mean, I, and my husband was like, you know, when my hair started falling out, he's like, you should call them. You should send that back. You should get your money back. Cause I probably easily spent $400 wow. um, during that time period. Wow. So yeah. you started using it. Let's go back to, so you see you like, I'm going to start it. You like, would, immediately, did you see good results? Um immediately. Okay. So what they, what their kind of concept is, is that you don't, um, you don't have to use like a rigorous, um, shampoo that's, you know, gonna foam and give you suds, um, because that's stripping your natural hair, the oils out of your natural hair. So, um, when I was using it initially, it was kind of like, oh, this is interesting. I'm using something that doesn't have any suds. Um, but the way that it was making my, my natural hair look to answer your question immediately, it looked different and it looked better than what it was prior. So I guess that's a long way to say yes. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I, mean, I know when I buy hair products, I'm like, is this really going to work? And you think for Diva Curl to have that type of phenomenon and to work on so many different type of curly hair, like regardless of ethnicity, curly, curly and, uh, you know, and kinky, so not kinky, but curly hair, like all the above people were loving it. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. How long were you using it before you were like, mm, this is not working? It was probably about two and a half to three months. Um, that I was using it. And what started happening is that first my scalp just started itching. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, Oh, this is where my scalp's itching a lot. And, um, I didn't think much of it at the time. I thought, Hmm. Okay. So then I found myself like scratching my scalp more. Um, and then as you know, I didn't really stop and figure out what was causing the itching. And then that itching turned to burning, and then once wow. it started burning, then that's when my hair just started coming out in clumps. So the itching was so bad. Like when you say itching, cause we all have an itch. I mean, I have an itch from time to time. Maybe no one else does, but I do have an itch. Like, was it itching constantly where you're, you're itching throughout the entire day? Yeah. It was intense itching oh. to the point where you're just like, and it was <laughs> my husband, you know, he would see me scratching my hair because sometimes it was just like, oh my gosh. And he's like, I'm pretty sure you shouldn't be scratching your scalp that hard. I'm like, I don't know. It's just, it's just so much. 
But it's so weird at that time, I wasn't thinking, oh, is this diva curl? I just kept thinking, what's going on? Why is my scalp itchy? Do I have dandruff? Is there something else? You know, so I wasn't immediately making the connection. You know, what's interesting about that, um, because in the docuseries, you, we hear from Aisha and some other, um, some other influencers, and I don't think anyone felt it immediately. In a way, you're lucky that you started having reactions so quickly. And I think the thing is, is that when you've been using something for a few months, a year, she was using it for for like six years or something wild. Why would you think it was that product that was so good for years? You wouldn't immediately think that. And that's so true because I remember when my, when my scalp was itching and then I, it started burning. I remember asking my sister and the first thing she said was, you know, usually when you have an allergic reaction, isn't it instant? You know, I don't think it's that it's probably something else. And so I was like, yeah, you know, you have a good point, but that was not the case with this product. I mean, thank goodness I didn't use it for six years. Um, I do have a sensitive scalp anyway and sensitive skin. So maybe that's why it affected me sooner, but yeah, it was itching and burning. Like I never experienced to the point that I went to my dermatologist and that's really when I figured out it was Diva Curl. I want to go there, but I want to go back to the itching for a second. So it's itching for like days, weeks. What are we talking here? Oh, probably, I, I would say weeks. Wow. Um, I would say probably a couple of weeks, two to three weeks, because first the itching was, it wasn't intense immediately. So it was kind of like a ramp up. So it's like, oh, my scalp's a little bit itchy. Then you scratch a little bit. Then a couple of days go by and it's like, it's itching a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. So it wasn't that, you know, after two and a half months, it just started itching uncontrollably. It literally was a buildup. And I think what happens with that product is that, like you said, it, it penetrates, you know, your skin, your cells, and that accumulation of using the product is what's causing the damage. Like if you just use it once, probably would never think anything of it, but it's the buildup. How often were you washing your hair? I was washing my hair at least once a week. Um, one of the things that I really liked about, um, going natural is that before when I was trying to keep my hair straight, it's like, I never wanted to get it wet. I was like, Oh no, Oh no, Oh no. It's like, "Ah, I can't 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 do anything. I can't even exercise. You just just got my hair done. I know. I just spent $200. (laughs) So, um, so one of the things I, that I liked about, and I still like about wearing my hair natural is that if it gets wet, if I wash it more often, it's not a big deal. So I was using no poo, um, one to two times a week, but I don't think no poo really, I don't know. It doesn't really cleanse the hair. I don't think. And I'm not sure like if from all the hides and all of the products, it's, it's just really, they need to un- be honest and share more information about what's truly in their products. You know, I don't think we're ever going to know. Um, You're right. I don't think we'll ever know, or oh, it's yeah. just a bad batch, or because they, they, it is now 2022 when we're recording this, and they still haven't admitted anything, right? And they said nothing right. was wrong with the products, right? And they're still selling it, and they're still selling it. Now, I will say this: I should call out that in 2020, they reformulated their products without admitting anything. So True. it is my hope that in reformulating it, they got whatever was the formaldehyde out of it. Right. I don't know if two active agents were made. I don't understand science in that way. So I can't even, I'm not a chemist. Um, and now sidebar, their products I looked online are like $23. So they've lowered the prices. <gasps> um, really? That's what I was looking online. I was like, oh, that's why I was asking you because I kept hearing they were so expensive. They're so expensive. So I'm like, really? Because well, I saw them for $23. But again, you lose. Was that, like a, was that like a trial size? <laughs> That's I'll have to go back and look, but you know, how, wow. how, how do they charge? A, you know, I don't know anything. That's true. And you know, when my incident was in 2019, mm. so it's before it's before Yeah. So your hair. Okay. So we're, you're scratching, it's bothering you. Then it's burning, which mm-hmm. like you're feeling the, I'm assuming the like 
flames coming off. I'm feeling the flames and my scalp. I mean, I'm dark, but my scalp is visibly red. So it's not just like, I I feel like it's burning. You could see that it was burning. So at that point, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I have to go figure this out. Hold please. Was your hair falling out yet? Yes. Okay. When did that start? So that started at about three, three and a half months. So this is what happened. My husband and I were, um, my husband's in tennis tournaments and we were in Minnesota and I jump in the shower. I'm like, I'm going to wash my hair. Um, I have my diva curl with me. And are you itching at this point yet or not? I am itching. And that's one of the reasons why I decided, oh, one thing I forgot to mention what I, when I was going through this process and having the itching and burning, the only thing that seemed to really soothe it was cold water. Mm. And so sometimes I would just get in the shower and just like stick my head in and just let cold water run on my scalp because it was the only thing that was giving me comfort. So I thought, okay, I need some cold water. And at that point I did have an appointment with the dermatologist, but I couldn't get in to see her right away. Um, so anyway, we're out of town. I jump in the shower and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to wash my hair and put cold water on it. My husband's like, okay, we got to get to the tournament, you know, in time he's playing. And, um, I'm washing my hair and I can, it's the weirdest sensation, but I could not only feel like see the hair come out of my hands, I could almost hear it. Like, you know, like I'm like rubbing and then I'm going like this and I could almost hear it like coming out. And then I'm like, it's in my hands And I just immediately was like freaking out. And my husband comes in, he's like, what's going on? I'm like, oh my God, like, look at my hair. And I literally was just like this and it would just like come out. And I lost, like, I lost hair all over, but the majority of it was like right in here and in here. The crown in the back is what you're describing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So you, I mean, you've had relaxers before. Yes. Ever, did you ever like a relaxer burn? I mean, I, I've had the, relaxer. I have. Okay. I have. Um, and you've had those moments, even when your hair, like parts of your hair come off, right. Cause you burn it. This was yeah. different though. This was coming from the root. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yeah. And you know, you bring it, that's a good point. So the burn, um, was different than a relaxer burn. It was more, um, more intense more painful. It was, wow. it was more painful. Yikes. Cause I know what a relaxer burn <laughs> feels yeah. like. I'm like worse than that. And it's and yeah. at least with a relaxer burn. I mean, that's chemicals and we were doing stuff to ourselves then too, but at least with that, you know, if I wash this off, it will stop. Right. Burning. Right. But right. I'm, you mean that was not the case. The brain just kept, going. it just kept going. And so literally, um, I, I was almost paralyzed. You know, I'm in Minnesota. I live in California. I didn't travel with head wraps and hats and my husband's ready to go to play his tournament. And I'm like, I can't leave the hotel room. Like I literally like had, it was so much loss that I couldn't cover it up. You know, like if you have hair loss, sometimes you're able just to kind of pin it down and kind of tuck your hair and hide it. It was it was, I was not able to do that. So it was, um, it was horrible. You shared with me the picture that you took in the bathroom in the hotel Mm -hmm. in Minnesota. And I just, I'm sure that was, that must've been a horror show for you. Oh, it was horrible. Absolutely horrible. Yeah. What happened next? So I had scheduled an appointment with my dermatologist, but I couldn't get in to see her right away. So when I got back, um, I called them actually, even before I got back while I was still in Minnesota, I called them and I said, you know, I don't have my appointment until this date. I really need to get in as soon as possible when I get back, because there's something wrong. Like I can't function. My head's on fire. There wasn't really anything that I could do to relieve, um, the pain And, um, so when I got back, they were able to get me, squeeze me in, somebody canceled. 
And she looked at me and she's like, what are you doing? Like, whatever it is you're doing, you, you, you have to stop, but what, what are you doing? So I had brought in like the containers of the stuff that I was using. And, um, she looked at it and she's like, stop using it, stop using it. So, um, she prescribed steroids because my, my scalp was like, so inflamed. Mm, So she prescribed like a steroid shampoo. Um, she also, um, prescribed a shampoo that was kind of like a anti, like, cause I think she was, she wasn't really sure what, what it was, but it was kind of like an anti, um, antibacterial shampoo too. Um, and she had me shampooing my hair with those things like twice a week. And, um, she just told me to stop using that, um, completely. And she prescribed Zyrtec. And so it was probably after I saw her, um, and I immediately went home and I remember washing my hair, the cold water feeling good, um, taking them, um, the oral medication. And it was probably like a few days after that where it wasn't completely gone, but I was like, okay, like it's not consuming my every thought. Like before you could be talking to me and then you're talking and all I can focus on is the burn and the itch. Well, and it's your head too. Okay. I mean, yes. It's, it's, yes. It's your head. It's, and it was throbbing. <laughs> And it's the place that like holds your brain and all your thought. I mean, I can't even yeah. imagine. Um, yeah. Wow. So you, at that point, you knew it was Diva Curl. Yes. Um, but you thought it was just not me. a global Diva, Diva Curl. It's I'm sensitive. This must be a, a, a me. Yeah. It's a Tasha problem, not a Diva Curl problem. Right. Because after that, I talked to my sister and I was like, are you sure you're not having any problems? And she's like, no, I'm not. And I told her what happened. And she's like, that's really weird. And then I talked to um, my stepdaughter and she was still using the product and loved it. Um, My husband, his, and all his wisdom, he's the only one that was like, you know, you should call them. You should tell them what's going on. You should make them give you your money back. You should send all that product back. And I was just like, oh. I just want peace. (laughs) You know, I just, I just, I was just so happy that I wasn't in pain anymore. And I, in my mind, I was thinking, you know what, it's me. I don't want to, I don't want to call and yell at the customer service person. You know, they probably get minimum wage. It's not their fault, you know, whatever. So I just, I kind of moved on beyond it. Okay. So you move on beyond it. And based on the timeline, you that happened to you in 2019. So the truth Mm -hmm. of the matter is, you weren't the only one at that point who was mm-hmm. calling the sirens up. But the other truth is that they didn't do anything. I haven't heard anyone say, hey, they gave me my money back. They said, we just, you're not having a problem with this. And they kept on right. their very way. When was the first time you found out that it wasn't just you? So it was about a year ago. And um, my sister, um, came across an article or a a clipping and it was on uh, something in online she found, but it was like an article online about diva curl. And I was like, huh? So it's not just me. Mm -hmm. And, um, at that point she's like, okay, I'm just not going to use it anymore. She said, because I'm not having a problem, but I don't want to start having a problem. Um, and so, but again, I thought, Hmm. I think I kind of moved on beyond, you know, past it. And so I was just like, ah, I, and I had already thrown everything away. Like I'm like, I didn't have any more of the product. I was just like, and literally it was like, there's just dollars money in the trash can that I, I just threw everything away. But that's when I found out about a year ago and I still didn't call them. I didn't do anything. I still have all my, you know, my email receipts. I still could reach out to them, but I, 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 I don't, never did. I mean, if it makes you feel better, I don't think it would make a difference. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Yeah, I, they're I not going to do something all of a sudden because no. Tasha Hawkball calls. <laughs> not, not that you're not a big deal, but just that nothing's wrong with their product. So why would they give you a refund? Right. Um, or why would they say anything? And, you know, I think this is part of the problem, right? With all of these things, when something goes wrong with a product, we don't and I don't know if it's a female thing or just a human thing. Um, 
we don't immediately think there's something wrong with the product. We right. think, oh, it must be just us. Right. Which makes it really easy for these things to continue and go on and go on. Why would you think that the hair products you're using would have formaldehyde in it? Right. And why would you think that the reaction that you're having wasn't just your reaction as opposed to something that was a global, I can say global, if anyone in the world was using it at that time, a global issue. Right. I think that that gives a lot of power, right, to the companies in a way because we trust them. You have a new product, great. Okay, good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ingest it. I'm gonna put it on my head. I'm gonna do what, and it's understandable. We're all like that, but herein lies the problem with the fact that there's no regulation. You know, it's interesting what you said too about how I didn't know that Diva Curl was one of those products that's like the no lather products because there's some other companies, not to call any of them out. I actually, well, I can say I used WEN. I used WEN for a while. I never had any issues with WEN personally. And I know they went through their lawsuit and whatnot, but that's their whole thing too, right? Um, they talk about like no lather um, and that concept. I'm like, oh, that makes, okay. Yeah, it does feel better. It does, it's not stripping. Mm-hmm. Um, it just kind of makes you wonder suave having an issues too. I thought that was interesting. I'm like, okay, suave. I didn't know that about you. What do you think about the fact that, and it was called out in this episode, as well as frankly, through every episode in some way that, um, these products, these hair products, including Diva Curl are all still on the market. Any that have had any issues are also in the market and they target them towards black women. I think it's horrible. I mean, it's, it's very upsetting and, um, and it, it, it's upsetting. And like, I know at the beginning you said, you know, maybe you didn't necessarily want to use the word victim, but it does very much make us feel or make me feel like a targeted victim. And, um, it's just wrong. And I think, that the fact that they are able to continue to do it um, without any repercussions um, is just, it's horrible. Yeah. I mean, Very upsetting. They keep making money off of it. You know, mm-hmm. they go in, in the episode about black women and hair relaxers and their, how dangerous they are. And he, I mean, I, you remember, I, I don't know if you remember, but I remember going to the store with my mom to get the relaxer and the trend when we were there is like, get the one without any lie, right? Because there used to be lie in it. And that was so bad. So it was like, no lie. Yes. Lie. Yeah. You remember that? Like, yes. Yes. Okay. Lie free. <laughs> lie free. Okay, good. It's a no lie relaxer. Or like at the hairstylist, they would be like, oh, we use the one with no lie in it. Yeah. But what else is in there? What else right. is in there? Right. Um, and then you have to wonder when they talk about the fact that 30 per- there's a 30% of greater risk for black women to have breast cancer you find out that relaxers also have formaldehyde in them. Yeah. So there was, I don't know, lie, but they had formaldehyde. Yeah. I had that on my head for years. Me too. At a very, and I was telling my husband at a very young age, yes. you know, like super young yes. and yeah. Absolutely. Um, early puberty is another thing that happens. And um, you know, I'm, oh, I'm sorry to me to cut off. You know, no, no. one thing that made me think about after watching that documentary, and I forgot to mention this to you, is that it also talked about women having fibroids, mm-hmm. and um, and I also suffered from fibroids, um, and I had them removed and removed and removed, and then finally my doctor's like, you can't just continue to keep removing them. So then I ended up having a hysterectomy, and I always wonder like, why is this happening to me? And I'm not saying it's because of that, but it's like watching documentaries like this makes me think, Hmm, maybe that was a contributing factor. Maybe that somehow played a part in my inability to have children. And I know that's kind of going far, but it just makes me think it could be, or maybe it's not going far. Honestly, like we don't know. That's the whole thing. If we think, oh, oh, I might be overreacting. And it's it's interesting that you say that because um, I have tons of fibroids, and I've been told I don't. I've never talked about this before, um, but I, I like publicly. But I have I have tons of fibroids, and I've been told by doctors before. Like I've actually had 
ultrasounds where the doc, where the, the, um, the tech is like, aren't you in pain? I'm like, no, I like you have huge fibroids inside of you. And even just recently when I went for my checkup, they were like, I mean, you've got, they were like your fibroids, you got a lot of them. You know, they said basic, sorry, I'll overshare, but like if they start bleeding a lot, then they want to take them out. But I've had, you know, different doctors want to take them out. Others don't. I'm like, well, if it doesn't bother me, although, you know, if I want to lose 10 pounds, maybe I should give it a <laughs> Oh, I have to tell you, oh my gosh. So my fibroids, the last time, I think I had like 32. The largest one oh. was like the size of a grapefruit. They said that my uterus was the size of a six month pregnancy. So they did the path all, you know, I got the pathology report back, you know, they, everything's benign, everything's fine. But I just thought, oh, I'm going to get on the scale and weigh less. They're like, no, they don't really weigh anything. <laughs> like that's horrible. That's I, I was so disappointed. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, that is not it. Yeah. I thought for sure. One, I should have lost a pound for fibroid. <laughs> Heck yes. I have lemon size fibroids inside of me and larger. So that's, and I just, I, you know, Scott's always like, do you want to do something that I'm like, no, 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 I just, I don't mess with them. Yeah. Uh, and if they don't bother you, I'd say just leave them. Well, I think because I've never tried to get pregnant, um, that might be, you know, if I was trying to get pregnant, I would probably, um, but my entire, what's interesting is my mom has, well, she's his, had a hysterectomy, but she had she had fibroids as well too. And we just, we'd always just tell the doctor and explain, oh yeah, we have, we have a lot of fibroids is like that a thing. And so I think that's interesting because now I have to wonder if it's a thing because we put a lot of serious chemicals yeah, on I our wonder. heads from the time we were a little like six or seven years old. Yeah. And we did that. I'm not blaming, but True. I'm like, we yes. did that because we were trying to assimilate. We were 100%. trying to fit in. And, um, and for so. anyone who thinks, oh, we all shouldn't have to feel that way. I think your hair is beautiful, right? Your natural hair is beautiful. I'm going to call BS. I mean, yes, our natural hair is beautiful. Um, but I'm going to call BS on that. I might get a little emotional. I don't mean to, but because even to this day, I see people who have their hair looking natural, who are celebrating that treated or people assume that they're not as smart they're not as yeah. professional. They're dirty. Um, they're dirty. And so I would encourage you to really take a look internally and ask yourself, do I really respect someone as much if they decided to wear their hair the way God gave it to them? Right. You know? Yeah. I did my big chop. Um, gosh, I don't like maybe 10 years ago now. I just decided I didn't want, I'm like, you know, I want to stop doing all these things to my hair. Um, yeah. And I was on, so I go natural. I'm on, um, when I was, I was hosting. So I was on an international shopping network. Thank goodness. Like they embraced it. They were fine with it. However, the viewers were not. And I remember I used to have a viewer, there would be two different types of viewers. I'd have a viewer who would just call me, would come in, would text in on our line. We could see the text just like hateful through my whole episode, through my whole shows, just hateful, horrible things that I will not repeat to the extent that my producer was like calling our tech people to get like them blocked so that I wouldn't have to see it because it would come up and I would see it and I have to just keep on going like nothing happened. Um, but the other person, people that I would have, there's some people like, I love your hair, love your hair. You know what? Cause I had, when I started, my hair wasn't natural. And then I went natural. I was, then I would have people who would, who were, um, who would say, Roxanne, I am a black woman and it's like either 60s, 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 50s and over. And they were very bothered by my hair because it did not look professional to them. And I always, I received that from them because I knew why they said it. I knew what they yeah. were I knew yeah. that they were lived in a society mm -hmm. and, a and they were judged and they were judged. Not yep. that the judging doesn't still happen, but it was very, I mean, there's a reason why you and I at age six or seven had a freaking relaxer. I just yeah. wham like in a chlorinated pool, um, competitive swimming and was still getting a relaxer and my hair was breaking, but lo and behold, you had to have straight hair to be in school. Cause if not, right. You would just work. I mean, so I get the, the, we're, I think we're making strides. We are. 
We definitely are. We definitely are. But it's still, when you see things like this happen, when people are embracing their curls, when they're loving who they were from the time they were born and you're seeing things like this, it's just, it's really, and then you find out, right, that that big beauty as uh, Kirstie McGinnis, who's on episode three of of this podcast, she coined the name, name big beauty. I'm like, Ooh, that's really like big tobacco, big beauty. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And it's heartbreaking. It really is, you know, and, um, you know, you're excited that you're embracing, you, you know, like you said, the hair that God gave you, and then somebody is monetizing it and, um, abusing it. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, we were talking about formaldehyde. So, okay, we got a relaxer. Maybe we did a relaxer every six weeks, Mm -hmm. but think about getting a relaxer every day. Like that's basically kind of what diva curl is. It's like, it's not a relaxer, but it's putting formaldehyde on your scalp every day or every couple of days. And it's not getting washed out. It's not getting you know, it's just like getting layered and layered and layered on because it's not truly getting washed out. And it's probably in all of their products from the shampoos to the conditioners to the leave-in conditioners and the leave-in, um, you know, curl stimulators. And so when I think about it that way, it's like, wow, concentrated every single day. And the thing is, is that we'll never know. No, maybe one day they'll have to review or someone will come. I'm sure they tested it after the fact, right? They know what it was. Yeah. And I think it's a disservice that they are not letting the public know because just think about it. Your doctor wouldn't have given you like two or three different things. If you mm-hmm. just known what the heck was in your hair. Right. Um, so the do's and don'ts they talk about in the episode, you know, they talk about the app. They recommend people get those apps. I did download, load those apps. Um, they talked about the safer beauty bill package that we, and one that I think was very specific to this episode, they talk about the crown act, which essentially, um, prohibits discrimination in the, in the workforce for wearing your hair the way you, God gave it to you. Yeah. Um, I, you know, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, I'm going to go and find out more about that crown act and sign it and help in any way I can. Yeah. Did you feel after you watched this? So we know you felt it's a little healing, right? You knew once you, a year ago, but now, you know, no, they did a whole dog yeah. on diva curl. Right. Like, literally did your jaw drop when diva curl showed up on the screen? I, I was like, oh, and, and because So when I saw your post on Instagram, we were watching something else. So I wanted to start watching it. And then right when I was starting to fall asleep, like get sleepy because I was getting late. You were binging through it. was, I was binging. Um, I was like, diva curl. I was like, oh my God, I have to see the wake up. (laughs) I'm like, wait, what? I was shocked. I was shocked. I I mean, I didn't, and I had no idea that it was part of the documentary, but oh, yeah. it makes, makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Do you feel, um, now because you know, what's on the bottle is what we have to trust, right? We, they, it, the, the bottle never said formaldehyde. So how do you go forward, Tasha, in buying hair products? You know, that's a good question. Um, it's hard. I mean, the sad thing is what I do now is I look for products that don't have a ton of ingredients. Um, and I look to buy products where I know if it doesn't work, I can easily return it. And if I feel any tingling in anything, I'm immediately like, Oh, nope. I don't care how good it smells, which apparently fragrance is an issue too, but I'm (laughs) I'm okay. (laughs) Oh my goodness. But I'm like, I don't care how good it smells. If it is irritating my scalp in any way, shape or form, I just, I return it and I, I just choose something else. So, and I, and I've also have had 
which is, which makes me wonder what's, and I won't mention the names, but it, it makes me wonder what's in these other products because I oh, can mention them. It's fine. If you want to mention. So them. I, um, so I used, um, O'Shea moisture for a while and I never had any problems with it. And I really, 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 really liked it. And then I don't know, probably like five months ago, six months ago, every time I put it on my scalp, it burns like a clean scalp. Wow. It burns. And I'm just like, I, I can't use it anymore. So now I've, I've switched to other things. So it makes me wonder What's if, it? yeah, or maybe it's just a smaller percentage. Like maybe Diva curled had a higher concentration and maybe the other ones have a lower concentration, but I want to know what does it give the product? Like what, why, what does it add to the product that they feel like that needs to be in there and compromise health? And I, I just, I just wonder what does it do to the formula? And again, like you said, I'm not a scientist either, but I'm just, That's what does question. that do? That's a really good question. What What's so great about it that it's worth the health of yeah. consumers everywhere? I, I don't know that. That's a good... Uh, <laughs> you stumped me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but man, it would be interesting to... like just Basically, what you're saying is make it make sense. What is that thing? Yeah. But I think that's, you know, not to go into episode three too much, but like with fragrance and the fact that fragrance... Whatever is in it that's bad is the thing that keeps it lingering on. So if you're saying, like, so first of all, who came up with that is something we discussed in episode three. But like, what is that thing? Is it the texture? Is it the fact that it keeps the curls defined? What is it? Yeah. But they're like, we've got to have formaldehyde. I know. Oh my <laughs> gosh. There's got to be something the else. Or whatever they're putting in it that's yeah. Disgusting. Yeah. It has to be something else. So I'm just trying to like make better choices. It's not by no means am I completely educated or completely comfortable with everything that I'm using, but I just find something, you know, I'll find something. I stick with it for a little while and actually not even a little while. What I'm using now, I'm, I've been using for over six months, but um, I just try and stick with it. And then when it stops working, if hopefully it doesn't, but if it does, then I just have to carefully try something else. We all just do the best we can with the information yeah. we have. Um, yeah. You know, it's a reminder to trust your body. Yes. Trust your body because your body is telling you. I know. That is so true. And yeah. maybe even trust your body over your mind, right? Because it's, mm -hmm. and and this is not on you. I'm telling, I'm learning about myself too. Like, if it's scratching, we're thinking, oh, it's just a scratch. No, it's scratching because it's telling us, hey, stop, 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 stop. Right. But our mind is like, oh no, I'll, I can rationalize this. Then it starts screaming loud. It starts <laughs> yelling at us I'm louder. Like, ah. And I keep thinking, oh, but it makes it makes my hair look so. Right. It's not worth it. Yeah. Oh, no, it's that it's the brain, you know, like the brain is make, is rationalizing it. But your body is saying, hey, 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 warning sign. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much for being vulnerable, you. Um, being so vulnerable and being open with us about what happened. Um, is it fair to say, are you willing to sh the pictures? Can I share them on this page, on the on podcast page? Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you. I mean, I think I know you've helped people and it's, it's always good to see that it really happened to people. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, some might go, okay, well, these were these, these young influencers that had these issues. No, it wasn't just one young influencer. I mean, you're young, but you're not an influencer. No, yes. I'm not that young. <laughs> so I'm just so honored that you um, were willing to talk to us and if you are listening and you're like, I want to find out more about that crown act or the safer beauty bill package, take a look at them. Um, it may be something that you might want to get behind and support. Um, and you know, we'll just try and be better. Absolutely. With the information we have. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for discussing this. Absolutely. Thanks again for joining us for 
the Rocks Talks Limited series, Toxic Beauty. A look at the HBO Max docu-series, Not So Pretty. Now you're probably wanting to know more. Probably wondering now, now what, what to do? And that's why we've put together a special website for you. It's called Toxic Beauty Podcast. There you're going to find some information that will help you get into next steps, including a free guide to your low-tox life, a beginner's guide to get you into uh, just knowing more about what products you might want to look at, you might want to change, and how you want to live your life. In addition, we have some Instagram links for you that's going to give you a great guide to perhaps some people you might want to listen to and follow and just to get more information. And we'll also on the website feature information about each one of our guests from all of the episodes. Now, I by no means have any desire to tell you how to live your life. I'm still just trying to figure out how to live mine. But I know that at the Toxic Beauty podcast page, you're going to find information that runs the gamut that will help you make those decisions for you and your family. I'd love for you to share this series with others. And please don't hesitate to tag us at Rocks Talks if you would like to continue the discussion on Instagram. And don't forget to pick up that free guide. Thanks so much. Take care and we'll see you soon. Thank you.